Hey guys, Ben from KCT here, and I just wanted to do a quick video for you guys about the bad lever and I guess the internet. So I have bad levers on all my guns and I don't really see any reason to change that because I know what they are, what they do, what they shouldn't do and how they can go wrong. Um, <clears throat> recently I've got a lot of newer shooters into the sport of shooting. And the first thing that they do when they pick up one of my guns is they're like, oh, wow, holy shit. You know, you get to the bad lever. I know, dude, this is so meta because I'm not even using a bad lever. I'm using a Phase 5 EDR. <sighs> Crazy. So, all right. They're like, wow, this is great. This makes reloading the gun really easy. You know, makes uh, locking it open for presentation really easy. If you don't know the, ma the manual of arms for an AR, stop and learn that before you do anything else. <clears throat> no. I've got them on every one of my guns, and I've, in about the 10, 12 years of, of shooting that I've done, I've not had a single negligent discharge. Now, does that mean that they don't happen? Absolutely not. They do happen. Um, does that mean that, you know, you can have a negligent discharge? Pretty much with anything, yes. Um, you know, there's Haley's favorite, famous one with the AK, um, and that guy is solid gold. You know what I mean? Like, if anybody's, you know, shouldn't be doing it it's him and you know, he owned it right away and he's like hey this is you know if you're if you're doing this for a long time you sort of have um not you're not you're not super complacent but you kind of fall into that uh, routine of that these things don't make mistakes and you don't make a mistake with them so why are we talking about this and the reason why is if you are a new shooter i would really recommend you stay away from it until you get to know the ar platform <clears throat> you know front and back if you use your AR and you shoot it a lot and you know what you're doing with it and this makes sense to you afterwards, then awesome because it's one of those things where it's like a good trigger. You don't need a good trigger to shoot. You don't. But if you get to a certain point in your shooting skills where you can't go any further with the, with the trigger that you have, okay, then it's time to look at that wall and what we need to do to go ahead and cross that. That being said, this is one of those things that, you know, is it faster? Yeah. Is it easier? Yeah. Is it safer? Ah, uh, that depends. That really depends on how good you are with that gun and what kind of situation you're in and the safety that, that you take, the care that you take with the gun. Again, kind of going back to gun safety, um, people are shot every year, thousands of them, with unloaded guns. What does the person say um, as soon as somebody shows up, the police or whatever, I didn't know it was loaded. I never would have pulled the trigger if I knew it was loaded. Well, you're a dumb gun handler then at that point because you know, you should know better. Um, but you know, if you're that, that it's a mode of still learning about the gun, I would definitely kind of put that in the back burner, buy more ammo, get more training. Now, that said, um, if you do have one, know how to use it. Um, <clears throat> realize also that a lot of times, it's just great for locking the gun open, you know? And instead of having to throw like two hand it, you just move it and you're done. So that's nice, but that's not really a reason to put something in the trigger guard that can send your bolt home. It does have its functions. It does do, you know, uh, a wonderful thing of doing just that. But if you don't know what you're doing with the gun, don't get one. Now, that said, again, I love them. Um, I've had instructors come up and they're like, oh, the, the ND button. If you think it's unsafe in the range, have me take it off. You know, we've never gotten to that point. Um, you know, I sat down with a couple of them. They said, okay, look, I just want to see where your head's at with this. And I'll <clears throat> walk through what I'm going through with the gun and what I want to do. And they're like, cool. You know, like you were able to explain that. You were able to put that into words, what you were feeling and what you wanted to do with it. So that means you thought it through. We're good with that. Now, if I sat there and like, you know, other people's boogers and fucking, sorry, uh, walking around, you know, just, you know, it's coloring books for Christmas. They probably would have said, no, you know, you, you look negligent as hell. First of all, probably get out of the class. <clears throat> but one of the things I saw recently is, <laughs> this is great. So somebody said, okay, well, you only need your finger in that trigger guard to do one thing. And that's pull the trigger. Now, is that wrong? No. But... Is it 100% right? <clears throat> no. So there are a lot of guns out there um, and these are a varying success. So I'm not saying these are great examples, but there are guns out there that 
they have you handle the gun in unconventional ways. So for example, let's look at the M14 and the M1A, where you have to pop the safety from the trigger guard out. <coughs> yeah, it's not the truth. So you have to do that, and basically you're putting your finger between the safety and the trigger, and I've done it a couple of times where my finger's been in contact with both. I'm like, well shit, if I push this one forward and like it rock my finger, is the gun gonna go off right here? So fortunately, you know, disaster averted because you actually think about what you're doing, but still it's a thing. Uh, same thing with the Ruger Mini 14, a lot of them that, that rotate out of the way of safety. Your finger is in the trigger guard to move the safety out. <clears throat> so, okay, now, and, and again, and again I, I get I get the general idea of it. I get the the idea of you know you're you're trying to do one thing with that gun and don't fuck it up and do eight things because you might shoot somebody. So the one thing that I got from them, this is great, is <clears throat> you know nothing else should be in the trigger guard. Um, nothing else should be going on in there. I will present a couple cases. One, the Tavor. Two, the FAMAS. Yep. So, neither one of those guns, I'm not a fan of all those, okay? So, neither one of those guns do anything for me. I'm not defending them. I'm not saying that, you know, they're awesome or, you know, whatever. I don't care. I, they don't do anything for me. But, when you have to put your whole hand in an elongated, massive, like, hand guard around the grip, you have a lot going on in there. Now, the people say, okay, well, yeah, but you know, like the safety isn't, right, I, I get that, but your whole hand potentially can go ahead and, and interact with that trigger in different ways. Um, there's really nothing that's sort of like walling, you know, your hand out. Um, <clears throat> I know they make a version where people, you know, they're like, oh God, it's not that, yeah, I know, I know, I get it. But, you're, so you think about this, you have your entire hand on the grip, which is inside of a essential pistol grip, oh god, I don't even know, like, safety, I don't even know what you call it, um, and, you know, you can have a lot of things going on, you know, your gloves, maybe your watch, you have your, you know, your compass, your clan nav, your, you know, espresso maker, your bong, your whatever, so... All these different things are kind of like floating around in that, that section, but yet yeah, these are military rifles, they're approved for military service, um, and the people that shoot them uh, kind of like them, except for maybe the final hospital, I forget that thing is. So, my point is, is that there's always an outlier, there's always an exception, there's always something that is going to be an exception to the rule and it's not going to follow the form that someone else is talking about, even myself. So, the point of this whole thing is, is realize that, yes, if you are pulling the trigger, if that's what's going on in there, that should be the number one thing. If you know how to, you know, um, kind of walk and shoot gum at the same time, but it's at a very, very high level, I'm not saying that I'm awesome, but I'm saying that I've never, uh, you know, closed my bolt and fired it around, um, I didn't want to. Um, you know, so there's there's always going to be something that, uh, that that doesn't make sense because there's an outlier. So guys, when you get your information, whether it's from me or anybody else, please just think about it. Um, you know, again, <clears throat> you know, guys are getting into these guns and they're like, okay, I've been shooting for two months, man. I've been, I've been out there every third weekend and I'm ready to go. You want to buy a bad lever? Please don't, you know. Until you really, really understand and you're practicing with that gun and you're working on it, you're dry firing it, you're doing everything, you're probably not in the state that, that you're ready for something like that. Again, doesn't mean that you're awesome because you do have one. It doesn't mean you're stupid because you don't. It's a choice and you have to make that choice based on the information that you have about your gun, yourself, your mindset, um, a lot of other things. Same thing with like getting a lighter trigger. You know, if you have a nice light trigger in your gun, like in a race gun, you know, like two to three pounds, you know that your gun, number one, it may not be drop safe, so that's the thing, but number two, you know that essentially just like brushing that trigger is going to set that gun off. You've decided to put that in there. You need to run with it. You need to own it and work it <clears throat> and understand that because you can go faster with that trigger, you have a lot more responsibility and you have a lot more chance of a negligent discharge. And that's kind of the way that I look at uh, a bad lever. And I know that we're just kind of looking at the phase five. And that's such a cute rifle, isn't it, though? It's just gorgeous. Um, 
married one. Um, you know, so just just think about that. You know, this this represents right here. This represents um, more of a chance that something could go wrong. How big of a chance? Don't know. It all depends on you and your situation, your gun, and everything else. Um, if you look at that and say, I don't need another chance for something to go wrong, don't lighten your trigger. Don't lighten your safety. I know I did a video on that, but don't do it. Uh, don't get a bad lover or a fierce boy, maybe you uh, You know, and just stick, stick with stock because that is the easiest way to not make mistakes because of the way that the gun is set up. So, guys, thanks for sticking with me. I just want to give you a little puff piece on that and a little food for thought there. And uh, so I just wanted to, uh, again, remind you guys, like, share, subscribe. It is a very, very small click for you guys. It is a very, very big thing for us, obviously, especially this is being recorded right after the election. Gun pages and channels are going to be hurting a lot. Um, so we are also moving over to Parlor, And uh, you can check us out, KCT Actual on Parlor, And we will be moving on to content over there as well. So, guys, thanks for sticking with us. I don't have anything else for you. We'll see you.